Welcome to another episode at Artisan's Alley. We're here at the Vernon Community Arts Center, and today we're lucky enough to have Nancy Vince, the happy art queen, here with us to show what she does, the magic that she does with her happy art, finding your zen. Welcome here, Nancy. Thank you. It's great to be here. A little nervous. I know. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different art forms that you do, do. I know you do alcohol inks and you do acrylic landscapes, but you've really concentrated the last few years on this happy art that you're doing and you're teaching it as well, right? I am. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about how your happy art came about. Well, I moved here from Maple Ridge right. in uh, about 12 years ago and uh, went was always, um, I was a gardener on the coast. You were a very well-known gardener, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 I had it in a few magazines and on television. And you organized large garden tours that grew with your influence, right? I did, yeah. And my friend and I, we organized about four different tours and we raised over $32,000 for Sunshine Dreams for Kids. Wow. Um, so when people ask me how my artwork, uh, was I an artist before, and I said, well, not really, but I guess being a gardener and creating this magical garden, which was full of little fairies that used to show up uh, magically, and um, over a period of three or four years, little fairy statues ended up in my garden. Oh, that's yeah. sweet. And um, I always used to say the fairies helped me in my garden. When we came here, uh, the garden club asked me what I was I going to create another garden, and I said, um, "No, I've always wanted to learn how to paint, and that's what I'm going to do." So they gave me a big paint set, and uh, as a I'm, goodbye present. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, and there's often a story involved in your pictures too, yeah. right? Yeah. What was there was something about sheep you meant? Uh, someone asked me if I had anything for Mother's Day. And I don't like to do specifically say it's Mother's Day or it's Christmas or Halloween, but I thought, well, I could do a mom and her babies, Aww. right? So the sheep has two babies, and if you look carefully, the ladybugs have okay, babies. Okay, what's the deal with the ladybugs? What is I the deal? I just love ladybugs. Like there's often ones hidden in your pictures, yeah, right? Yeah, I just love ladybugs, and people look for ladybugs. So. Are there other things you hide in there too sometimes? Oh, lately I've been hiding little mice. <laughs> <laughs> so you start with pencil. Yep. An HB? Uh, just a 2H pencil. Okay. It's nice and light, and I, I work on a, um, an illustration board as opposed to illustration paper. Okay, so this image has your pencil marks and you've started to draw over them with the microns, right? Yeah, yeah, and I use a micron. I usually use a 02, which is a nice size mm -hmm. for, for uh, detail. Okay, so I've got a little, uh, I've got a little uh, Kelpie thing here, okay. and I think I'm going to put that one in behind because I've already got something in front of this one. So I will draw this little guy here. And and I never follow the pencil lines exactly <laughs> because I get to erase you them, can. and because I can, yeah. And so I'll go like this and like this, and then I'll there's one little fin there, and here, and I'll go like this, like this, like this. Give them an eye. And then I'll probably Aww. put and then I'll probably put some more designs into him mm -hmm. after, but I, I draw all the basic shapes first. I, there's gonna be designs in in the seahorse. If you look at the seahorse over there, it's got all the see it's got all designs. It's gonna have lots of color but in it. But first you finish the outlines, right? First I and do the then outlines. Then you start doing then I start to add like this one here is finished with all the little, all the lines, all and the lines, designs and little and designs, and the flowers, and and so here now with this one here, and now I'll go like this, and like this, and then I see here I might just bring this one up to about here, so this might be the end. So I'm actually going to go over this drawing I've got here of the fish 
because that fish is going to be in behind, mm -hmm. right? So this is my little, my little bits of kelp. So now this is going down behind this fish, right? So now he'll tie into. There. Isn't that darling? Yeah. And then when you're doing the, the doodling part, say on the seahorse, how do you decide what to do? Um, I just. Do you yeah. plan it in advance? No. Nope. I just kind of. Do you draw it with pencil first? No, not not these kind of designs. Like here, on this one here, I would probably. I'm probably going to do the squares, so I'll just... You're such a I'm, steady hand, hey? I'm, I'm lucky that it's pretty good, yeah. And then I, I might just... So... Okay. And then I'll maybe color that, the colors of the rainbow. I love the colors of the rainbow. Mm -hmm and uh, I use them a lot. So this one is ready to color? Yeah, is this it? one is ready to color, and it's, it's a take on this one. This is one that was on illustration paper. Uh, I've pulled it out of the frame, and because it had that little bit of, uh, I could have just recolored those pieces, but why recolor something that I know is gonna fade, yeah. even under cons conservation glass? So I decided to redo the drawing. Okay. So I've redone the drawing here. And so if you look at this drawing at this stage, it really is a puzzle. Even the shape of the pieces for the cat very much look like a puzzle, don't they? Yeah. Wow. No rules. No rules. Is this one of your drawings scanned into a larger format? Is that how you got this so big? What I do when I finish my drawings, when I finish this one here, I scan it. I have a scanner at home and I, I scan the black and white image. So I save all my black and white images now because I create coloring books. Mm, coloring books, yes. Yes. And so um, then once it's w once I have the black and white, I go to put the color on and then I scan the image again and I do my scanning at home. And this size here, I scan them at uh, 600 dpi and 24 bit color. And that gives me about a 22 meg file. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so with that file, I can take it down, get it processed and then I create my cards. Uh, I can send that image to get artwork on pillows, artwork uh, on puzzles, um, bags, everything. Do you use a wide variety of I use, pens for this, right? I use Copic markers. Now, some people call them Copic markers. I've always called them Copics for whatever reason. You made it to mine. Yeah, so it's hard to change when you've called it that for sure. three years. And so they're your markers, you they're can my call markers. them what you like. Yeah. Um, the Copic markers are a brush tip marker. They uh, have a wide tip and a, a brush tip. Okay. Uh, I have learned the hard way um, to always remove both ends because... Why is that? Well, sometimes I've worked with them with one end on and I'll be working away and all of a sudden a blob of ink comes out. Oh dear. So I don't know if it's air pressure or whatever. Okay. But, Good to know. Uh, so I always remove both ends and I'll just, I'll work on a tree here, so okay. that's always easy, so. Easy for you. Yeah. And I always start with the lightest color. I could probably um, do this whole piece in here, in this color here, and then I can darken it. Shading with darker in yeah. places? Yeah. Sure. And. The, the beauty of these markers is that you can blend, you can shade with them. And so they're in alcohol ink? They're in they? alcohol ink, yeah. So this is, uh, this is a, a, a YG03 and this is a YG17. And so more green, less yellow? Uh, yeah, one? it's just a little darker. Yeah. So um, I'm going to put my shading in here and I will just go like this and now I will go back. So with, with the Copics, you start with your light, add your, your, your uh, blending color, and then you work it in to... Oh, nice. See, so now you get a nice little bit of a, a shaded area here. And then I think, I think on this one, I might make this a little bit darker 
and so I'm back to the 17 and I might just do this whole thing in dark. And because I did the whole piece in the lighter color, um, it doesn't in interfere. So, so I would never do dark and then expect to get something light because Copics or this type of artwork, um, if I put down red, I can't make it green. I can't, it's not like acrylics, you know, where you can uh, cover something up. And I think maybe it's I'll It's more like watercolor. Yeah, and I think I'll add what a little bit What you see is what you get. Yeah. yeah. I'll add a little bit of shading. Nice. Uh, maybe a little bit over. Maybe I'll just do a, a line here. Okay, so from the blank piece of paper yeah. to the finished artwork, colored and everything, yeah. how long of, does that roughly take for you? Okay, it takes me about an hour and a half to do the pencil, an hour and a half to two hours to do the rough pencil sketch okay. to get my ideas down like this here. Okay. Um, then um, the whole, this part here, drawing it all out like on, on here, that's probably gonna be about five hours because this is just basic here. Yes. Now I've added detail. Added now I've added detail. all of this and I've added the little bunny rabbits and oh and there's a little mouse <laughs> there's a rabbit, I see. <laughs> and there's a mouse and a mushroom and a mushroom yeah I mean the basic shapes have to be there but the mushroom shapes will be there but I have to draw in all the little circles and do you just decide the colors as you go or do you as plot I it go. out no as I go you're such a rebel <laughs> okay then you take it and you do all of this amazing stuff with it like you make these beautiful scarves mm -hmm. you make pencil bags pillowcases, purses, clocks, clock. puzzles, Don't forget coloring clock. books, <laughs> coffee cups, cards, yep. and then every year Nancy does a book. Tell us about these. Um, every year since I started my artwork, uh, I have a book on acrylics, all the paintings I did. All of Nancy's pictures that she's done throughout the year, she documents them in these beautiful colorful books yep. and I just think it's a great way to keep track of the chronology of your artwork and the growth that, yep. that happens as well as you get two copies made for my kids. eventually so my, each of your kids will each get Each of them. my kids will get one. Well Nancy I just can't tell you how happy I am to see the success that you are generating with your work and making the world a brighter place one picture at a time. You're so talented, I'm so glad you came. Well, thank you. We look forward to seeing more of your creations. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for joining us here on Artisans Alley at the Vernon Community Arts Centre.